Yeah, the market's been here for 50 years now, which is uh, kind of hard to believe. Um, I started back in 1966 farming. I would worked in Annapolis Valley for five or six years, and then moved back home, bought a small farm. Thought I could make a living growing fruit and vegetables on a small scale. But it didn't take long. I learned that uh, it was hard to get markets for, for the small producer. And, uh, so, 1968, I decided I needed to market my own products. So in partnership with another gentleman, we bought a piece of land and I cut some logs off my own property. In 1969, spring of 69, we uh, started to clear the land here and uh, my father-in-law had uh, woodworking equipment so he cleared the land and then my father and I built the first little building. At that time it was just a shell of a building, it was uh, about 800 square feet. And uh, we started selling my own produce, plus uh, other small farmers in the area would bring different things in, and uh, that was the beginning of the market. And some yeah, the first market in 1969 was, uh, as I said, was about 800 square feet. It was just a uh, small wooden building. Uh, we started selling our local produce as it came on, and. Uh, Strawberries would have been the first uh, one of the first items. Uh, we opened in in July, and uh, I bought had my own strawberries and then into raspberries, and I bought produce from some of the small local producers just to supplement what I had, which was my idea to start with, <laughs> support local. And uh, as I say, we opened in July, and we were open until the end of October. Things went fairly well. I wondered sometimes if I was in the right place and so on or not, but uh, the first summer was uh, quite slow but went very well. We were closed for the first winter, closed the end of October, and we opened in, uh, I believe it was in the middle of May, and uh, we uh, bought any products we could locally. We even went as far as Prince Edward Island to buy potatoes. And, but whatever we could buy from Nova Scotia, we did. And uh, things went along pretty good that summer. We were open seven days a week from nine until nine. And uh, then in the fall of the year, when it slowed down, we uh, closed through the week and opened mainly on the weekends, Thursday through Sunday. Uh, we heated the small building with a propane heater and. Uh, it wasn't that well insulated, but uh, we got through the winter, kept produce from freezing through the week, and uh, we bought quite a few things from local people. At that time, uh, there was a few women, farm women, that it, it, uh, wanted to make a few extra dollars, so I started buying pies and rolls and bakery goods from, from local people. And that went on for two or three years before we started the bakery. In the second year, we uh, got into a few grocery items because there was two campgrounds quite close in the area, and not much place for them to get uh, basic foods and that. So we got into a few groceries and uh, camping supplies. We also put in hit ice cream, homes of ice cream, and so on, and uh, we started selling. At that time it was penny candy, we had a showcase and kids would want to come to the market to buy their penny candy or get their cone of ice cream. So that, that was a way to help get the parents out and interested in our business. In 1971 we put our first uh, small expansion, which was just an area on the back of the first little market to uh, store products in. And, uh, then in 1973, we built another large piece on behind me here, which was uh, 36 feet by 85 feet. That was a, a major expansion, a major step. And uh, at that time, we were able to handle a lot more products. I have a little story about when I first started buying apples in the valley. I had taken the truck down and 
trailer and I it was early in the apple season, so I picked up some apples at one farm and I went along and there was another farm with an orchard right handy the highway and they were in the orchard picking apples, so I stopped and talked to an older gentleman there and told him I had a little market tour area and wanted to buy a few apples. So he said, yeah, he would sell me some apples. And at that time they were mostly packed in probably 50 pound boxes. So I told him I would take 20 boxes, we put them on the truck and there was still room for more. And he said, well, you should take a few more. I said, well, no, really, I, that's all I can afford right today. And uh, he said, well, you can take and pay me later. I said, no, you wouldn't want to do that. If I'm just a young fellow and you don't know me at all. You know, you travel the way down here from Troy, you might as well load up and, and take a full load. So we put another 25 boxes on. I tried to pay him for the first one. He said, oh, no, keep your money. He said, pay me later. Well, that turned into a very uh, benefic beneficial for me and for the grower because I bought apples from that firm for 28 years after that. Lots of times I wouldn't, he would say, oh, well, keep your money until spring. He said, I don't get paid for the Packers until spring. So he said, you might as well do the same. So it had a real good working relation. Our sign that we have, uh, which is our sort of our iconic sign that is well known now, the, uh, the uh, Horn of Plenty. And that was uh, designed by Priscilla, my wife, in 1973, and she painted it. She, artist of a kind and uh, she did a very good job of designing and uh, making our logo which we still use today 50 years later.